One time I myself got sick unexpectedly and wound up in the hospital. I don't know how he found out, but he was there in 20 minutes. And he was there, he anointed me. Next day, um, I was in my hospital room and he walked in about 11 o'clock in the morning with my mother. He flew my mother from Louisville to Washington so she could be with me. He lived so simply, sleeping as long as I knew him on a hard twin bed frame, cooking our meals at home and doing the laundry, constantly doing the laundry. <laughs> it was a sacramental. But it was also a Sabbath. You remember Bishop Jugas, you lived with him. He would go down into the basement of the big house and there he would do laundry. And I think that's where he thought it was like a Sabbath, it was like a Bethany for him. So I let him do mine too. <laughs> when my husband passed away, he asked to be the first person to be called. So we called him, he was there giving the blessing and uh, the last rites. So we are forever grateful for his love, for his compassion, you know. So gentle, um, very convicted in his faith. There was, there was no doubt where where he stood in, in terms of following Christ and his teachings and his love for Mary. And, um, but he did it in such a way that he, he embraced everyone and, I, and, and people were drawn to his, um, his purity of heart and spirit. The bishop, I mean, he, he, he not only preached the word, but he walked the walk, if you will. I mean, he was just full of love for everyone unconditional love for all of, all of God's people, and especially for the poor. He had a, a certain, uh, you know, calling for the poor and for the sick and dying. He did a lot of work with the sick and dying in his retirement years especially, and he was a great comfort to so many families. He just exuded Jesus Christ in everything he did, and I think it was something that really touched so many people, not only here in the Diocese of Charlotte, but when he was in the Archdiocese of Washington and when he traveled overseas, including vis visiting the missionaries of charity in India and that strong friendship he had with Mother Teresa, now St. Teresa of Calcutta. Um, just someone who planted seeds of faith that I know have been nurtured and I'm blessed that the seeds he planted are, have been nurtured and God willing will continue to be nurtured in my life and my family's life as well. So I always would say of, of Bishop Curlin, he was born to be a priest. He was born to be a priest.